So let's talk about this. Uh, well, first and foremost, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. So you were working at, I think when we first met, you were working at N NVIDIA, right? Yeah. What were you doing at NVIDIA? So my title was uh, Senior Principal Scientist, um, primarily so prior to joining NVIDIA, um, I was the Chief Analytics Officer for the uh, City of New York. So I really did a lot of my data and AI work in the urban space within city and uh, uh, environments. And so I got to reach out from Jensen um, and said, hey, look, we want to bring your skill sets into NVIDIA. So a lot of uh, my focus at NVIDIA was on how we use AI and supercompute in cities to solve a lot of the complex, intractable uh, challenges in cities. Um, NVIDIA, now if you want to think about from a product uh, perspective, there's two products at NVIDIA that primarily functioned with. And so you have the NVIDIA supercompute, which they refer to as superpods um, as the base infrastructure, but then it was two products. One was Rapids. Uh, which was like um, uh, an advanced data science platform and AI platform. And then the other is more well-known, which is Omniverse, which is their digital twin technology where they do physics-based um, 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 simulations and, and 3D viewing of anything in the world. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I primarily functioned in that space, worked with cities globally, um, worked with urban environments globally uh, to implement uh, AI and supercompute. All right, so I meant... I know you started at Motorola uh, and then you were at NVIDIA, but you're not there anymore. And one of the conversations we had was about the correlation between college athletics in the world of tech and the sense of when you're really good at something, people are always trying to find you as the next talent. Can you explain that to the audience of, of how the tech world has a correlation to college sports? Yeah, I think there's two. Uh, no, that's uh, such a great question. I think there's two ways you want to look at that. First one is in Silicon Valley, and I spent um, time not only with NVIDIA, but at a startup engaging in and around Silicon Valley. In Silicon Valley, they don't, if you're at a company, if you're a tech um, genius, giant, um, even halfway decent at Silicon Valley, if you stay at a company more than two years, you basically are seen as somebody who's garbage, like passe, mm -hmm. because they're constantly looking for the best of the best, and they will do anything to pull you from one company to another. You've seen it in biopics, whether it's the WeWork biopic or Uber's biopic. Success of a company is taking the best talent from other companies and bringing it to your companies. And oftentimes it causes drama um, um, because you know um, they got to do backhanded deals and so on and so forth. But they're always looking for the top company. So you're always looking um, to be the best. And, and uh, the other way I would, um, put it and so I spent um, a couple of years. I was faculty at um, uh, Johns Hopkins, research scientist at Johns Hopkins for a while. And I spent two years um, teaching it, uh, in Hong Kong at Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And I used to, when I was faculty there, I used to go around and um, go to a lot of the tech companies. And one of the CEOs of a tech company was like, Yo, I, you know, we recruit some of the top scientists from around the world um, to come and work. For our company but what we do is i said well how difficult is that he said well it's not that difficult because they're all seventh and eighth graders so what they do is they actually begin scouting you the same way you think about aau it is the same way they think about scientists they start at seventh and eighth grade and they start grooming you to come to china and what they do is they put you into their universities and then um the pipeline is right into their companies and his thing is like look we bring the best of the best over and we start looking at them and we go to science fairs at seven, seventh and eighth grade. And we bring them over. If they don't come to our company, they still are what's referred to as friendly alumni to the universities in, in China. And so it's like it's a win win for China in general in terms of bringing the intellectual capital over. But they treat it. They treat um, uh, science and scientists the same way we treat. Uh, sports plays. And I got one more anecdote. So when I was at Hong Kong, so I was at Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, one of the most beautiful college campuses in the world. And they have this dope uh, soccer field um, that almost looks like it's sliding off into the, um, into the water. And we used to go and play soccer all the time, uh, basketball, football, whatever, but mostly, mostly football, soccer. And there was one dude that was nice. Like I'm, I've rarely seen football players like that. He was nice, nice. 
And he was in my class. And I went up and I was like, yo, do you play for the national um, um, soccer team? He was like, football team. He was like, nah, because in my family and in my culture, it's actually more honorable to be a computer scientist than to play sports. So he was like, I'm actually winning more that I'm a computer science major at college than I would if I played sports in the national national team. So there's there's a lot of similarities there. For those who are aspiring to go on your path, NVIDIA has been one of my favorite stocks for the last few years, but it's really taken <laughs> off this past year. Um, for those of us that, that are black and brown that want to make it into these tech power players, what would be your process if you have to start over now for how to break into an NVIDIA and Apple, Microsoft, Bezos Foundation, what tips can you give us to help break into those uh, landscapes that we are not often seen in? Man, um, I don't know if my tips would be helpful, but I can share some of what I think, but that's such a great question. Um, for me, my focus was always on the math of it all, the science of it all. Um, oftentimes what I've seen, and I went to all HBCUs, I went to Lincoln University undergrad, Morgan, uh, Howard University for my master's and Morgan State for my doctorate. And I stayed at all HBCUs, um, but what I saw was a lot of my friends and colleagues, they would come in and, and within the first couple of classes, shift out of the computer science realm into like business information systems or project management, um, those sort of non-math intensive, computational mathematics intensive programs. Um, companies like Motorola, when I was at Motorola, I was at Motorola Lab, so I was a research scientist there. Um, my primary research over there was uh, when Bluetooth was being invented, I was a part of that team. I had um, three patents there. Um, it wasn't just me. Um, it was a group of us and we all got our names on those, those patent disclosures. Um, but, uh, the reason why, uh, I was able to go to Motorola labs, which is the research arm of Motorola and work on the projects that I did was because I had a math background. And so staying strong in the math background. And I never went, I ne literally at the Bezos Earth Fund, um, is the least technical that I've ever been in my career. That the reason why um, when so I had an hour long interview, as, as Troy, you mentioned, I, part of my uh, interview process was an hour long one on one interview with Jensen. And one of the things I requested in that interview was I didn't want to be a VP. I didn't want to have the title VP. I wanted to have a technical title because I wanted to remain very technical. Um, and so senior principal scientists at NVIDIA is the technical um, equivalent to a VP at NVIDIA. I was like, I want all the equity that a, that a VP gets, but not, not the title. But I was deliberate in staying in the math and lane and in the math space. I, to this day, I still program. I, I, I do a lot of programming with my son and, and some personal projects. But to this day, I still um, focus on computation work. So, all right. So let's get into this. So um, for where are we headed with, with artificial intelligence? Like, where, where is this? Is headed. We talked about um, you know a variety of different things in the past, but I want to hear from your perspective as somebody that's doing it and has done it for a while. Um, where are we at right now? As far as like, is this the infancy stages, and where where do do you expect it to be in ten years from now? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I think that's such a important question today. Yeah, it's just this morning the White House just released its um, executive order on AI, and um, um, I spent some time, I had, I, I, I saw it uh, prior to, but I spent some time digging through it this past weekend. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to challenge um, innovation as most, most regulation tends to do. Um, so I think six months ago to a year ago, um, uh, the trajectory may be different if a lot of these regulations that just came out um, through this executive order, take hold. But that aside, let's 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 assume, which is the case, that federal regulations take a long time to even um, uh, 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 have any impact or effect. But let's answer your question straight away. Um, I think if you look at um, the different domains that are using AI 
um, what you're going to wind up seeing are a few domains where it's most impactful and then you'll begin to see some domains where it's least impactful and so domains like health is where you're going to see ai really take off um, regulations and everything aside but because those regulations from the health space have been built in um, you'll see um, it take off there you'll see ai take off in the defense space uh, mm -hmm. aerospace um, you'll see uh, you'll see a lot of ai in the personal uh, engagement space that is sort of building out this concept and you guys have talked about it on your shows like this concept of um, sort of your own personal chief of staff your own personal senior advisor your own personal scheduler you're going to see a lot of ai um, in that space 